Hey gang, Scott here. I've got a tip to share with you with the curves controls in Lightroom, how you can actually make two curves adjustments. And I was doing this with a black and white photo to create a very high key look, worked pretty well. Thought I'd share this with you in the video here. So uh, the key thing here with Lightroom is there are two different approaches to using the curves control. You have a parametric curve and you have a point curve. I've done a different video on those things. I'll put a link in the show notes so you can check out the details of them. The thing is, you can use them together. And for this photo here, you know, making this very bright, you know, uh, high key, maybe with a little less in the shadows type of photo here, it worked really well. And I'll just turn off and on the tone curve so you can see the differences here before and after. And I used two different curves to do this. So if I open up the curves tool, we have the parametric curve which has these you know, minor adjustments you can see here and changes to where the transition points are. And then the point curve, which has some pretty aggressive changes there. Uh, I'll describe them here, but you know, the, the key was using both together. And let me turn on my snapshots here so we can see what's going on. So here is no curve at all. And uh, the photo's a little flat, uh, the whites aren't bright, and we can see the histogram is very compressed. Right? There is no uh, pure white point. There's really not much of a pure black point. Everything's kind of in the mid-ground. And we expect that with a foggy photo, there is a lot of middle gray. First, the tone curve. Turn that on, and we see the drastic shift in the photo already. Uh, notice that histogram at the top before and after. We see things getting pushed way over to the right. The tone curve histogram hasn't changed, though, like right before, after. Well, what's going on here? First was taking the endpoints and just taking this point and dragging it to the left so that we're pushing it to the top. We're really redefining the white point. This is another way of setting your white point. You can use the white slider and so forth. Sometimes I'll just use the curves to do it. I mean, it's an older school technique. Still works, still useful. And uh, this was uh, just, just what I needed there. I probably pushed that a little bit farther than I had before, but that's okay. Uh, did the same thing with the black point. You notice it's nudged in a little bit here. And I didn't want really, really deep blacks in this photo. I like this kind of airy feel. And the next was taking something in the lower midtones and pulling that up. So if I pull this up, you can see that middle gray is just getting a little bit brighter. So that was the, the first adjustment. Let me go back to that snapshot. That's where I landed. I was like, well, you know, it's still a little dull in the middle gray and trying to manipulate this curve to get this area to be a little brighter. I mean, we can grab this thing and kind of position it where it is. It's, it's, up, in the, it's up in the pretty bright areas there. Uh, I could try to grab this and pull it up and I was having trouble getting this to work without really, it was interfering with the other parts of the curve. Back to my snapshot. So I turned to the parametric curve because we have a second curves control here. And the thing here, the way this parametric curve works, you can set the transition points from the, uh, you know, the, the darks to the shadows, the shadows to the midtones, the lights. These are normally like, you know, kind of a quarter points each one. So we can set this here. It's like, let me pin down my, my uh, dark area. Let me pin down the highlights. And then the sliders work the curve for you. So you can push the lights and the darks what this gave me is the ability to set a range of that curve that would be kind of affected, right? Here's the lights, here's the darks. So now as I adjust that lights, I'm really kind of focusing the adjustment in between these two markers that I've put here. And that let me get just that nudge that I wanted in that upper mid-tone area without affecting the other portion of the curve I'd already done. So I get to get two curve adjustments in one and then fiddled around with the darks and so forth. And I ended up you know, here with my final result. The curve itself is quite subtle. There is a little tiny bit of rays here and a little tiny bit here. So this curve ended up being just a nudge. 
but it was just what I needed for the photo. So that's how you can use curves twice in a Lightroom editing session. And I find it to be quite helpful when you're doing something in black and white, especially if you're trying to go for a higher key type look where you're really pushing those, uh, those upper mid tones and those highlights uh, near pure white. Hope you found the video interesting, useful. You got questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.